Hello YouTube, my name is Brent and today I want to teach you how to sew Rankin and Name Tape onto a patrol cap. I know right now most of us are under self-isolation, uh, so why not learn a new skill during this time. First I want to show you how to sew a name tape using a regular sewing machine, and then after that I want to show you how to sew rank on using both a sewing machine and a sewing kit. Let's get started. Alright, so here's everything that you're going to need for uh, sewing everything onto the patrol cap. You're going to need the patrol cap itself, name tape, uh, you can use Velcro one, uh, but it's just easier if you order them, uh, the non-Velcro ones. Uh, it looks a bit more professional and you might not mess it up if uh, you use one of these. Plus I believe they're a little bit cheaper. Also the rank, and then one of these kind of sewing kits that the military issues. So the first thing that we're going to do to prep the patrol cap is use a seam ripper and take off the Velcro that's already on there. Uh, it's a fairly simple process. You stick uh, this piece underneath the thread and then you just rip along the seams uh, to take it off. fairly simple. Next you're going to generally size up your name tape with the velcro. Okay, Generally want it about the same size as what the velcro was before. Once you have some good creases in there, you're ready to get sewing. All right, if you have a, uh, a sewing machine, uh, if you don't know how to use it, I recommend uh, using the manufacturer's instructions. Typically, they either have come with videos uh, in the form of a DVD that comes with the actual machine itself, or you can go on YouTube and look up the specifics on how to operate your machine. Uh, but as long as you have a basic understanding of how to uh, sew a straight line with your sewing machine, you'll be able to do this. All right, so now that we have the creases in our name tape and the name is generally centered, what you're going to do is uh, using the old stitches that were on there, I'm going to clean this up just a little bit, take a little bit of the fuzziness off of there. You're going to see where the holes were stitched on the Velcro, and you're going to use that to align your actual name tape. Now obviously make sure that the name is facing the proper way, okay, so you see right there, that's where the stitches were. I'm going to generally place it right there and that'll help us line up our name tape. Once you have this lined up the way that you want it on your PC, you're going to go ahead, put it underneath the foot, lock the foot down, line up the needle, and I always prefer starting with the bottom edge of the name tape and then going from there. Uh, I'm just going to do a complete circle with uh, going around the entire name tape so you never have to lift the uh, needle out or anything like that. First thing you're going to do is start with the locking stitch. So start off by placing the needle all the way through the entire PC and the name tape. And you're just going to run the uh, sewing machine forward and back a couple times and that's going to create a locking stitch that's going to ensure that the stitching doesn't come undone uh, over time. Okay, now that you've done that you just go around the outside edges and as straight of a line as possible if you mess up uh, or if your machine messes up just stop you might have to, to cut it off using the seam ripper and start over again, but uh, that's the nice thing about these is typically you can't tell because it's camouflage. So if you do mess up, uh, don't worry about it. Also, another little tip, uh, advice tip: keep the needle all the way down whenever you're making your turns. Just lift the foot up and then turn it, and that'll help create. Uh, 
it, it, it won't mess up the thread uh, if you do that. And it'll keep it on course. And typically on the edges, I like to go up and down uh, twice because the edges are going to be where the most of the stress is if it hangs on something. So um, I'll just go up and down a couple times. Okay, same thing. Needle is in the down position. Make a turn. Lower the foot. Keep going on the straight line. Needle is down, bring up the foot, make the turn, and go on up and down once, and tw once or twice. Okay, here at the end you're also going to want to do another uh, lock stitch, so just back and forth a couple times. Alright, once you're done, go ahead and lift the needle up into the highest position, raise up the foot. And then using the cutter on the side, cut the excess free. Oh. And there you have your stitched on name tape. Very simple. So we'll start with uh, sewing the rank on the PC using a sewing machine. Then I'm going to cut it off and show you how to sew it using uh, just a regular old thread and needle uh, from a sewing kit. So to start off, you're going to want to try and figure out where the center of your PC is uh, based off of how it fits. So the way that I do that is I just fold up the bottom and touch these two pieces together down here and then see where the arc of the curve is. So as you can see, it's generally in line with this seam, but that's not always the case. So you're always going to have to try and gauge where the center of the PC is based off of the brim because the brim is going to be the most prominent part on your head. Uh, luckily this one is generally in line with the brim so I'm just going to use the uh, center stitching right here on the front as a guide. From there you might have to shave down the edges of your uh, rank. Uh, obviously worn officer rank is a little bit thinner than enlisted rank so what I use as a guide, depending on uh, what size the rank is, <clears throat> generally cut it three quarters of an inch from the rank itself. So three quarters of an inch on all sides, and that'll help fold the excess without too much hanging over the sides. From here, go ahead and fold uh, the tops and bottoms, and then the sides, leaving uh, about an eighth of an inch uh, from the rank on all sides. Okay, so there we have it. Roughly an eighth of an inch on all sides. Okay, just kind of keep this pressed together and then put the PC into the sewing machine. Got too much excess right here, but that's okay. Start off just by raising the foot so that way you can get the PC underneath. I like to start from this side right here. Now, prior to actually starting anything, this is where you're going to line everything up and make sure that the fold is still nice and uniform across all edges. And then place it down. If you need to use pins or anything like that to assist you, by all means use those, but um, typically I like to just wing it. Um, it's all based on your preference and uh, your level of comfort with using a sewing machine. Okay, from here, raise the boot up. And start on your first corner. Okay, right here is about where your final check should be. I like to put the needle all the way down just to make sure that it's staying in place from where I want it to, and I can kind of 
swing the rank one way or the other based off of any other need that I may have. Okay, so generally spacing pretty good up there, same as down here, and generally in line with the middle seam. We're going to start off with the, uh, the locking stitch at the top, go all the way around all the edges, and then another locking stitch right where we started, and continue on. Like I said before, keep the needle down, raise the foot up before you make your turns. come down just a little bit more but that's no problem. Make that one jump, turn it again to this next corner. Keeping the needle all the way down, foot up, making the turn, foot back down, straight line all the way back up to the top. Needle all the way in, foot back up, and across the top, foot back down, hit the edge, reverse and do the locking stitch. Okay. And now, go ahead and cut the excess. Alright, so it's a bit crooked, but that is generally how you put it on there. If you mess up like this, it's too easy. Just take a, a seam ripper, cut off the rank, and then start back over. Luckily for you guys, I'm cutting this off anyways to show you how to do it by hand. Alright, so say so you got promoted in the field. You need to uh, put your new rank on your PC. Uh, what you're going to have to do is typically all the sewing kits, they come with some sort of seam ripper. I think I got this one out of the older style. Uh, but I prefer using this style sewing kit because the thread's a little bit stronger. So using the seam ripper, just like we did on the uh, name tape, just go ahead and ride along the seams to take off the interior seam. Make sure you're taking... Uh, a little bit of precaution making sure that you're not actually ripping the PC itself. So you're going to have to take it a little bit slow because there's a lot of these edges here that it might get hooked in and rip the seam of the PC itself. Alright, so now the rank's off. Go ahead and clean it up by pulling all the old threads through. Just double check and making sure that you didn't snag any unwanted threads. Also, there's going to be threads on the back side that you'll have to take care of as well. Sizing and positioning is going to be generally the same for sewing using uh, a regular thread and needle, so no change to that. We'll just keep this folded up as best as possible. Uh, to put on the front side. Move your attention to the actual sewing kit. So out of here I've used this one quite a bit uh, over probably a couple years. Um, inside generally you'll have a small pair of scissors, thread, a couple extra buttons, things like that, and then the actual needles. You'll have stuff to keep, uh, keep stuff in place, just regular pins, and then you'll have the actual threading needle itself. For this, uh, it comes with two different types of thread. One is for the old ACU style, comes in a gray. And the other one comes in a coyote tan color. We're going to use the coyote tan for this because uh, it's OCP. So the amount of thread that you should use, I recommend using about two arm lengths, so measured by holding from here to your elbow. So I'll measure it once, hold on to that piece again, Measure it back out to the elbow, and then cut using the scissors provided. And the cleaner that you have this cut, the easier it's going to be for you to thread. Grab my needle. Okay, it helps if you uh, 
you just lick the end of the uh, thread and then patience is key here especially if you don't have a steady hand let me try and center that get the thread through the eye hole and bring it through Okay. Leave a couple inches off on the end of the thread. Uh, don't tie a knot or anything like that. That'll just make it difficult whenever you're going through the PC. Resize this. Still got a little bit of cleaning up to do. Obviously, you're going to have a new rank that you're going to have to reposition in size. And that's where, more than likely, you'll probably end up using those, uh, those pins and needles just to get it in position and looking a little bit better. Um, so if you want to, you can use one of these push pins to keep the corners in place. Um, sometimes it makes things a little bit easier. Sometimes you just end up stabbing yourself. Uh, it's up to you. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and freehand it um, and go from there. So the first thing that we're going to do, similar to what we would on the sewing machine, is you're going to make a locking knot. Um, to start off, I like to typically start from this side but we can achieve the same way just by going through the PC entirely come over onto the other side pull all the way through okay obviously it's gonna mess up just a little bit by uh, you letting go of it but try to enter roughly around the same area that you just uh, went through okay and you're looking uh, through the other side where the needle's coming out. So that's nowhere close to where we started off at. Give it another shot. And you're going to end up stabbing yourself a lot, so... Sorry about that. Okay, so that's coming out generally where we started off at. It's not too important to make sure that you're completely aligned right off the bat, but it helps. Pull the needle through this side. I have to help push through. Okay, once the needle's all the way through, okay, you have the starting stitch. Pull this through as much as possible. All right. Now we're going to tighten this up. Start keeping it aligned. So it doesn't look terrible later on and then go from here we're gonna go back in right where we first started off at go straight back through that one and then on the back side what we're going to do is create a knot so that way it locks it in place so after you have the locking stitch in the back, push the needle back through to the front side. And here we're going to start our alternating stitch. So what I mean by that is about every sixteenth of an inch on the front side, because that's the side that's going to look the most important, uh, you're going to have about a sixteenth of an inch gap between each stitch. So it'll be, uh, you won't see any thread. And you'll see about a sixteenth of an inch of thread, and then no thread for about a sixteenth of an inch, and so on and so forth, all the way around. We're going to go all the way once around, and then on that second pass, that's where we're going to fill the gaps of each one, so it'll look like one continuous stitch. And if you mess up during any part of this, just gauge where it was, so there's about the sixteenth of an inch mark. Uh, if you pull it all the way through, and it just doesn't look right, just pull the thread out of the needle, pull the thread all the way back, so hopefully you didn't push it all the way through and pull the uh, thread all the way. Um, and then just uh, just reposition it as needed. Um, I know it's a little bit of a tedious process, so I'm going to speed this up. And um, I'll show you after we've made that first full turn.
All right, we're about at the point where we have the alternating stitch. I'll bring it in just a little bit so that way you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, it doesn't look exactly the best, but we can kind of church it up on this back half uh, by making the lines look a little bit straighter. Uh, the way that you're going to do that is on each one of these front gaps, that's where you're going to place your next stitches on this way around. So I'm going to start from the back. Uh, I'll probably create another stitch right here in this top corner and then work my way around again uh, trying to keep the lines as straight as possible um, to make it look a little bit better. Alright, so this is a bit of a guessing game whenever you're coming through back to the front. You want the needle to come through generally where that last stitch ended. So hopefully you can see that right there where the needle's coming through just underneath that top stitch. And that's what you're going to do is I'm going to bring this through, make sure it came out in the right spot, which it looks pretty good from there. Pull this all the way through, move that thread out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this needle back in right above that other stitch and that's how we're going to alternate making that continuous stitch look. And there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and speed it up from here, and I'll talk to you at the end. Okay, so I have a heavy amount of fraying on the end of my, um, my thread. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut off the th frayed portion and re-thread my needle and continue on.
All right, and here we have our final stitch that we're gonna do. Just bring it all the way through. And to lock it in. I'm gonna bring it back through one of these and loop it a couple times. Through these neighboring stitches. And this will lock it into place. You can cut off your excess right leave a little bit on there and there you have it all right obviously for field work you're gonna do what you can in any given situation and this will definitely last you for the rest of the field problem um, by no means does it look outstanding but it's better than nothing and if you take uh, take enough time and care you can make it look pretty good but in a pinch, um, this rank's not going anywhere. And uh, you'll look a little bit more squared away for having uh, your stuff sewn on in the field uh, than if you had pin on for the whole field problem. So those are the basics of sewing rank and name tapes on OPC. If this video helped you in any way, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. If it didn't help you at all, go ahead and leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments. Either way, thanks for watching.